That's how I like it. In it to win it. I own whole term insurance. Did, did Sam just say he owns whole term insurance? I own whole and term. He just mixed them all into one yeah, bag. Man. That's how I do it, dude. Because uh, I'm a comic and I understand the importance of trimming the fat off of jokes. <laughs> purposes only. You'd be an idiot to listen to anything these degenerates say. Invest at your own risk, do research, but seriously don't listen to these ass clowns. Now enjoy Cash Daddies. Welcome to Cash Daddies. We're banking fatties, baby! Pew, 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 pew. Banking fatties. Uh, thank you for joining us. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, join me as always from space. Jay nice. Johnny Woodard. How are you, Johnny? I'm good, man. You know what? I I've chosen to uh, just uh, put, I'm, I'm putting the Celsius thing out of my mind. I'm not even going to, I've decided I'm not going to think about it for six months. And then, uh, and then I'm going to kind of look at in six months and see what's going on. So I'm, thank I, you, Johnny. Thank you. Well, I'll I'm be a... looking at it every day and texting you about what's going on. And then live yeah. from his uh, his his uh, bear headquarters, huh? Yeah. Yo, hey, Lamont, this, is Hi, this is my this is Lamont. This is Lamont. Oh, come on, Howie. It is. That's his name. That's Lamont. And this is uh yeah. this is Lenny. Lenny. Uh, Lenny, Lenny and Lamont, huh? Oh, Power Len bottom bears. Lenny special ed. So, but okay. he's, uh, uh, he's a good guy. How we do we? How are you, buddy? I'm good, brother. The Jets are winning. Yeah, Yankees are winning. The Knicks are going to be winning once we start this week. This is New York is back. Yeah, New back. York seems to be on fire while LA is hurting. Yeah, hurting. Jets, Giants, Yankees. Everybody's winning here. It's crazy. It's been years. Yeah, I mean, to be a a baseball fan is the worst when you think your team is going to do well. Listen, analytics in baseball is the go woke, go broke of baseball. Okay. That's what it is. It's, it's ridiculous. And you know what? I mean, we're not going to make one change to the Dodgers. They're going to keep the same guy, Andrew Freeman and Dave Roberts. And we're just going to go through this well, all they, again. They just won a 111 games. Why would they, or what? It was 114. Jesus. Yeah. Why would they yeah, change dude, anything? Dude, when you pay. 30 mil more than everybody else, you should win more games. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, and especially Man, if they did get caught with their like pants That's down. amazing when you're outspending anybody, everybody by 30, 40 mil. It's not amazing, okay? You have constantly, by you I mean Andrew Friedman, has constantly for the last, what, nine years, implemented this style, and it doesn't work in baseball and i'll yeah. tell you why it doesn't work because baseball is flow and you're destroying the flow and eventually you're doing analytics on analytics that's what it is you're not getting a real read of wh what's good and bad because you've been positioning people all the freaking time that that's not natural stats I'm sorry. It's just ridiculous man. Stop telling a fucking outfielder he can play shortstop these guys are the best of the best at their positions. Stop thinking you're the bigger than the baseball gods. It's ridiculous. I'm over it. Anyways, how's your week? My week's fucking great. Okay. Oh, Market's oh. coming back. Yankees are up 3-0 right now. How could it get any better? Oh. My girl's still in Florida. I may go out and make some bad decisions. I don't know. That's why those bears are in the house. I got yeah, it. That's I got why, it. Right? You want to make them feel like this is your lifestyle all the time, not just this, while you're when you're. This like, is it. This your is girl's it, gone. Man. I'm fucking ordering pizza wings, getting crazy, getting an Asian hooker over here a little later. It's gonna get awesome. How uh, how was your week, Howie? What's going on? Any interesting moves? Any market discussions? Yeah, I mean we're coming back nicely. We're bouncing back. I got some Morgan Stanley calls that are back in the money. Um, a lot going on. Oil is back down to eighty three bucks a gallon. I mean, I'm sorry, a barrel, eighty three a barrel. Um, so you can still buy XLE, you can still buy OA, OIH, they're still good buys. 
but you know what? Earnings are out now. Earnings are coming out. A couple of the banks came out. They were actually better than uh, than they should have been. Fucking Sam sent me, and this is beautiful, J.P. Morgan. Sam sent me an article where the analyst at J.P. Morgan downgrades BlackRock when it's basically at a 52-week low. And like all these dumb fucks, he downgrade. Why don't you downgrade them when they're up? Downgrade them when they're when Does that they're make high. any sense to you, Holly? Do you not understand the math on that? Well, Why I do wouldn't know downgrade this. somebody when they're up. The day he downgraded them, the, the stock went up 4% yesterday. It was up another 2% today. Since the day that guy downgraded, it, the stock's up 6%. So he it makes him look like a dumbass. Way. It makes him look like a dumbass. That's my whole point. They did the same thing with Meta, whose earnings come out October 26th, by the way. I think I think the stock's way up by then. I think it's a good buy now. It's probably going to go up by then. I'll tell you what's interesting. Economy's in such a shitter. Things are really bad. But you know what? People in America, hundreds and hundreds of people are, are paying to have the new Rolls-Royce EV shipped into this country, and they're only paying $413,000. Uh, I saw that. Car. It's unbelievable. 413000 for a car. But the thing about Rolls Royce is you can run them through a wall. You you won't care. That's what you buy. You buy. They are the sturdiest car. They're like tanks, bro. Maybe There's the ones with maybe bitchy. the ones with combustion engines. But I wouldn't want to do that with a battery cell underneath my car that you know you just cracks like that and you you go up in flames. I don't think that's a great these are great EVs. reason to buy it. I don't know. It's wild, man. It's 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 wild that you know it makes you wonder how bad is the economy if these fucks. Well, that just tells you that tells you the separation between the lower and middle class and the upper class. It's like this. Yeah, I yeah. mean, it's like this. It used to be here, then it was here, and now it's just that's a different society, man. And what I really love about that is like if you really watch. What the elites tell you and what they do, it's always two different things, right? They're always yeah. talking about tiny houses, little EV yeah. cars, right? While they're buying mansions and they're driving fucking Rolls Royce tanks. Yeah. Yeah, that's what the elite does. Yeah. They're all about, you know, don't leave your footprint. Don't leave a footprint. Yeah, they're buying fucking 72,000 square foot houses. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Leonardo DiCaprio's flying on private planes, crying about the environment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I thought I, you know, I saw some. This is kind of going to be our future now that we've all gone to a la carte programming and streaming. Uh, but Paramount CEO came out and said streaming prices are going to keep going up just through the years, and that's. I think you know we all thought we were doing a great thing when we broke up the cable companies but i you watch dude i'm already paying almost as much as i was paying for dish network uh now with all the streaming services yeah. uh he said the, the price umbrella on streaming will go up and we'll tuck in under that and we will raise prices as well whatever that means that's the most corporate speak we'll tuck in under that i can i can't tell you exactly when that will happen but directionally it's gonna happen for sure outside so. of hbo max all these other places can go fuck themselves, okay? I, I'm I'm getting rid of Netflix. Dana's like, don't do it. I'm like, we don't watch it. There's well, they had good news there. too. Netflix had good news. Netflix added 2.41 million subs, uh, which was crushing their expectations across. It sounds the board. like a bunch of people at Netflix went and bought a bunch of subs because I don't know anybody who gives a shit about Netflix. I'm just telling you. And they're I'm they're share, right now, shares though, that, way up, dude. The stock is up third. 13% in after hours. 13%. It's on, that, it's on that news, the, the subscriber news, which was just just crazy. And I'm pissed. I, uh, they I said, they like said uh, the majority of that growth came from the Asia Pacific region, which accounted for 1.43 million subscribers. The U.S. and Canada had the smallest growth, contributing to just 100,000 net subscribers. Ah! So they're growing overseas and... Uh, not so much here in the states and Canada. Yeah, it's, it's like you know, it's like anything overseas. It's always a couple years behind us, and then they start just you know, it's like fucking. Uh, it's like what's his name, the dude that you, the dude became a singer that used to drive around, uh, the drunk that used to drive around that car that that drove by himself. Fuck was his name? I don't know Baywatch. what you're talking about. The Baywatch guy. 
It's like oh, David you know, Hasselhoff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He would play in bars in the United States and maybe get 40 people at his concerts. Then he goes to Germany and he's got like 100,000 people showing up to watch him. Yeah, dude. Yeah, that, that doesn't matter. You're right. It's like that guy, Rodriguez. Remember that documentary, Searching for Sugarman? Sugar Man? Do you, not, you yeah. know that? Yeah, yeah, that yeah, guy. yeah, 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 yeah. And the guy's just, like, he's basically homeless here. Yeah, well, and he's Elvis. And he goes over there, he's playing South like Africa. arenas. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I should do. I should start doing fucking comedy in Zimbabwe. <laughs> fucking, I'll be Can a legend imagine? over there. <laughs> we, just I'll crushing go, in front of a bunch of like hardcore uh, Africans. That would be good. Yeah, I'll go over there and just bang their women. Yeah, uh, I was going to tell you about Apple stock ticking down on a report that they're cutting iPhone 14 plus production, which is bad news for them. Yeah, because probably it's because it's the same phone as before, Johnny. You got well, that's that's actually the one that they cutting they're cutting production on is the plus the one that's actually a new phone that didn't exist before. It's the iPhone 14. It doesn't have all the features. It's just a bigger screen. And yeah. this is they're they're telling uh one of Apple's manufacturers in China has been instructed to immediately halt production of the iPhone less than two weeks after its debut, according to a report. So that one just didn't do well. They thought Aww. that people would want it's that that one's the cheaper. The cheaper internals with the bigger screen, basically, and uh, you would think that that in this economy would be the one that would do the best, but it did not. Let's talk about, and this is right up your guys' alley. Let's talk about this beautiful chick who I actually had the chance of meeting one time, okay. the Crocodile of Wall Street. Oh yeah, I saw this. Let's talk about Heather Morgan, who her she and her husband embezzled, I want to say seventy two billion dollars in Bitcoin. Something, Something like that, yeah. astronomical, and literally she's holed up in an apartment right here in New York City. She just she's holed up. She doesn't leave. She and her husband have different attorneys right now. She's caught in a plea deal. Um, oh, let me guess. They're gonna let her get out and her stick it to her husband that they always freaking do. The court system so fucking full of shit, dude. You well, remember her, right, Sam? That's that chick that did that uh, weird music video. Yeah, and then she yeah. got they got busted. And now she's going to cry like, oh, me a victim. Me, girl. Me don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that in um in uh, Asian, but I felt it was appropriate. I was at a, I was at a comedy club one time. It was, I was there earlier. What was I you doing? You should go more often. I've seen your Pick up a check or something. And, and this chick got on stage. Yeah, Sam made a fucking joke. <laughs> <laughs> douchebag <laughs> so this this fucking chick got up turned some mic and just started singing and rapping and it was her and they all oh, really everybody was talking about her they're like yeah that chick's worth like billions i'm like what what do you mean it's like yeah she and her husband uh ripped off uh a shitload of bitcoin this was and this was like over years a long time ago and she was just it. like hanging out she's like yeah I yeah yeah, she was hanging out. They couldn't, you know, they couldn't. They finally caught her. I don't know how. Uh, because she signed up for an open mic, like they knew where she was. <laughs> no, they, they were. There was no proof. They couldn't find out that because you know, with Bitcoin, you you can't tell how it's how it's stolen and shit. You, it takes a long time. You got to yeah. figure out, you know, fingerprints and shit. I got some big news for you guys. You ready for this? Right. McDonald's. It's going to start selling Krispy Kreme donuts at nine oh. locations. Yep. Are you ready oh, yeah. for that, Sam? Yeah, let's let's do that. Let's throw a Krispy Kreme on top of a Big Mac with some fries in there, and then just call ourselves Carl's Jr. because that's a Carl's Jr. move. By let's how much let's see how much stuff we can put on a hamburger. And Aaron Judge just hit one. Woo! Why did we have to record during the Yankees game? Like, my God, hey, dude, Un Judge and Stanton, unnecessary. Zero. All right, okay. Uh, no way one of those guys is on steroids. Yeah. By the way, they're all on steroids. Aaron Judge is not on steroids. He's oh, a clean... you're right. He's got Cro Magnon face, and he's totally normal. He's a clean all American. Dude, that's even what that he is. gap in his teeth is fucking shredded. <laughs> Dude, I'm fucking Yankees are right. I'm going to I'm going to the Houston playoff game. Oh, I don't know if I do that. Yeah, it's gonna be rough. It could be brutal. They look great. Um. I hey, here's it. big news right if here. Houston wins it this year. I'm going to lose it. The only reason I would be happy that Houston won, and the only, is Dusty uh, Baker. Because yeah, the guy awesome. just can never get his team to win. 
That's the only reason. Because I like Dusty Baker. I fucking love Houston. And I despise the Astros. Like, I despise the Astros. You Like a hatred that I've never felt for a team before. You love Houston, but despise the Astros. I love the city of Houston. I love it. It's one of my favorite places to do comedy. The black chicks are futuristic. I'm all about that action. And But the Astros can go fuck themselves. One of the last places I ever went with Brody Stevens was Houston Astros, their uh, new stadium, what, Minute Maid Park, home of cheaters. So small. It's so small. It's huge. It is not. It's tiny. It's a, it's a big park, bro. Holds 38,000, 37, 38,000. Your mom holds 38,000. Oh, Yankee, oh, Yankees, oh. Yankees are up around 50. What do the Dodgers hold? They don't hold shit. Bro. None. It's like 40 something, we I got think. sat home. We hold nobody. I think it's yeah. like 40 something. Uh, um, what is it? So that was 56. Shit. Yeah. I understand. Yeah, Houston's now. tiny. Houston's small. Okay. Respect. I respect that. Um. Uh, all right. Well, that's a uh, 15 minute. Sam, you want to take us into the uh, interview? Yeah, man. We got a great interview. Uh, with sorry. Uh, how do you pronounce his last name? Ibrahim. Sorry. Ibrahim, uh, him and Howie go at it a little bit. It's a fun conversation, you know, uh, and like it. Spicy, spicy. Enjoy this interview. Hey, everybody. The recession is underway. Fuel is through the roof. Food prices are insane, and people have started to even lose their homes. But there can be a massive positive to this because recessions are where more wealth is made than in any other time in the economic cycle. Take the last recession, for example. Those who invested in property and stocks more than doubled their money in less than two years. But no market rose like crypto where people made 10x, 50x, even 100 times over the same period. That's what James McMahon did. On his Crypto with James YouTube channel, he told his 21,000 subscribers to invest in the same 26 coins that he did. Had you invested $100 in each, you'd have been in profit more than $123,000. His top pick of the year, a crypto called Phantom, went up a staggering 692 times. Remember, this is public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify it yourself. James will be sharing every coin he buys during this recession on his Copy My Crypto membership site. It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know a thing about crypto or how to invest. You simply copy along. So, to join the 2,800 members who copy James, go to copymycrypto.com slash Sam. That's copymycrypto.com forward slash S-A-M. It's your call. You can thrive in this recession or be a victim. Go and visit the site and read every word. All right, so let's get into it. Very excited. This gentleman uh, emailed me, and uh, we finally made it happen after a couple uh, misses. It's here. It's going. Uh, we're going to talk investment, uh, betting on yourself, banking for yourself, all that stuff. Please welcome. Sorry, Ibrahim. There we go. Sorry. How are you, brother? Hey, guys. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a pleasure to be here. Sorry. I'm very uh, thankful that you came on. Sorry. I'm horrible with names and that that was a weird intro, but we appreciate you just <laughs> rolling with the punches. Um, For our guests, our listeners who may not be familiar with you, sorry, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our guests can find you? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Thanks, for guys. our listeners. Yeah, yeah. So I'm the host of the podcast called Thinking Like a Bank. So that's pretty much that's pretty much a, a big part of what I do. The podcast. I also have a company called Financial Asset Protection. So we're a financial services firm. We do like financial planning, budgeting strategies for real estate investors, business owners, in all fifty states. So it's all done virtually. And yeah, and I'm glad to be here and glad to talk more about whatever you guys want to talk about. I know. Well, you know, this show is it was started as two guys who uh, have kids trying to uh to invest you know how he's been investing forever <clears throat> and i've been blessed that you know some business things have gone well for me so i wanted to learn it and you know we thought this would be a really great way to help people out there because that's what most of my brands do i like to help people help themselves and we wanted to do that so i know one thing you wanted to talk about was banking on yourself can you yeah. tell us a little bit about that yeah, definitely. So I just I, I came across uh, this book called The Bank on Yourself Revolution. It's it was written by Pamela Yellen. And I pretty much found this book. Like I was just doing research on financial planning and strategies for clients. And I just accidentally found this book on Amazon. And this book talks about the strategy of building your own wealth, 
um, regardless of market conditions, becoming your own source of financing. So like high level, that's what bank on yourself is uh, to kind of get like further into it. Like what it is exactly on a technical level, it's using dividend paying whole life insurance to become your own source of financing. So I know that's kind of like too far with the life insurance part. I may have lost you already by now, but no, but not at all. We're in it to win it, dude. We're into yeah. weird. So we're all about that. So dude, you start right now. Whole life insurance? Yeah, exactly. I get that reaction all the time. Let's yeah, hear man. it. I'm right out right off the bat. I'm like, I got the crosses up, brother. I'm whole life insurance. Explain I got whole life insurance, bro. Nah, man. Do you go ahead and explain it? I have term, but go ahead. I have term yeah. and I have whole. I ain't messing around, bro. I, I I was I used to work as an insurance agent, you know, and I loved it when people came in asking about whole life insurance. That was that's wonderful. Hell yeah. yeah. Explain. I sound it's a nice little, nut little you get paid on. on that bad boy. <laughs> yeah, so out of so out of kind of like out of 450 different financial vehicles out there, dividend paying whole life is the only one that could grow tax free, uh have tax free loans, withdrawals, can grow regardless of market conditions, can be used alongside other investments, still has life insurance, is protected from creditors depending on the state you live in. So kind of like all those things wrapped together. Um, it could do, it could do, it could do all those things. And even port, more importantly is that you can use it alongside like other investments. So you don't have to like say, you know, should I do real estate or this whole life insurance thing? You could do both kind of together or even more investments in that. So kind of like high level, that's kind of how and why we use, you know, whole life insurance in that way. Well, there's a lot of investment vehicles that grow tax-free. I mean, variable life, yeah. that's, you know. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, variable life. But the problem with variable life, right, is that it doesn't grow regardless of market conditions. Like a variable, like universal life is going to be like connected to, it's like a mutual fund. It's going to have volatility in it. You know what I mean? So like to get the tax-free growth, the growth regardless of market conditions and the access to it all at the same time, it kind of makes it really unique in that way. All right. Is, why would I... Howie? Huh? What's your issue with the whole life? Yeah, it's not really an investment vehicle, man. You're over. I mean, you're overpaying for the death benefit. Yeah, too, dude. Lawyer, it's like but... not. Look, I. It's 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 not an investment vehicle. It's uh, look. It, when I used to sell stuff yeah. like that, don't get me wrong, man. If somebody was going to buy it, it was a beautiful thing because. Uh, the, the commissions that we got on those were and variable life. So I'm getting ran right now. Is that what you're telling me? I have some whole life. No, I mean, it, it's got value. It's just, I mean, versus term insurance, what you're paying for the same amount of death benefit is, I, I mean, both, it's, it's bro. I'm doubling down on this a lot more. There and, are and, and that some... money, that extra money. You could just be investing on your own terms, you know, in an IRA, yeah. or something, a tax deferred IRA. And if you were, if you're worried about market conditions, you know, put them in bonds or something like that. Yeah. I mean, there are situations where whole life's not going to hurt you. I mean, you know, you die, your loved ones get uh, left uh, with a chunk of money. But well, that's uh, why I got it. Yeah, you probably have way too much. No, uh, dude, I want to set those kids up. I want them to drip when I'm dead. Well, I mean, variable life, wealthy, wealthy people that have estates of, say, $10 million or more will get variable life because... When they die, their kids will not be able to pay the taxes on those estates, and those estates will go to the government. Um, that's why they get them. Uh, and, you know, Sari's right. Uh, they are related to the market because, you know, if I'm going to buy variable life, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, you know, I probably got 10 to 20 more years left to live. Uh, I, I want to protect this. 10 50 million dollar estate i have and if the market does what it's done the past 200 years or whatever it'll do seven eight percent a year uh and that'll end up being a really decent chunk to leave them to pay so um you know whole i look at whole life as more of a protection thing i don't really look at it as an investment vehicle yeah i agree it's i don't when i'm talking to clients i never call it an investment i call it like a savings tool or an alternative to like almost like a savings account because it does have a savings portion it does have the life insurance portion yeah. and we structure it so that way it's maximum cash value where it, it could break even like in year four 
and then keep growing after that. And even you, we can even do where it's like you only pay it for seven years. That's it. And then it keeps growing after that. Whereas with term, it'd be difficult to do that with term, right? Just only paying for like a short period of time, then have it paid up for the rest of your life. Um, I think like what happens with term versus whole life, like right now, like if somebody's 30 years old and they want to like compare term to whole life, you're right. Term is going to be a fraction, like a million dollars, 30 year old might pay like $25 a month or $30 yeah. a month, something like very small. And then if you want a million dollars on a whole life policy for a 30 year old, it's probably going to be like 10 or $15,000 a year. It's going to be pretty pricey, but here's the twist to it though. Is that with the with the whole life you could pay in for like seven or ten or fifteen years a limited time and then just churn off payments after that and it keeps growing, whereas the term you can't the term is gonna keep if you do a like a twenty year term it's gonna expire at year twenty and then when it renews at year twenty it's gonna be like the the more you age with term the more expensive it gets more so, expensive yeah, yeah so somebody yeah if you can get someone to do a whole life man that's like you know they're paying ten fifteen thousand a year and uh. You, what are you, what are you you're making like 30 percent off of that man that's a but the client it's it's about the client right so the client's gonna look at it from this perspective like they're they're buying it for the cash purpose so like they're they'll think all right if i buy this policy and i do ten thousand dollars a year for seven years and it's paid up i could take out a loan against the policy at any point i could withdraw money i could use this as part of my tax-free retirement plan i could borrow against it invest in real estate pay the pay the loan back on my own terms that's how they're kind of looking at it from that perspective. The life insurance is important, but that's like 30, 40, 50 years from now. But right now they're just thinking about how they can use it as a financing tool, as a financing vehicle. You know, because think about it, when you borrow the money from the life insurance company, there's no credit checks. It doesn't show up on your credit report. There's yeah, no payback. Aren't, mm -hmm. aren't you kind of borrowing your own money? You're borrowing from the insurance company, leveraging your money as collateral. So what happens that way is when you do it that way, the policy keeps growing and compounding as if you had never touched the, the policy. Hmm. Yeah. Now you don't think that uh, just a term policy plus doing your own investing in the market or having some professional do it for you is, uh, is going to yield uh, more profits in the long, in the long term. It could, but the problem is, is volatility, right? Like it's like, look what happened in 2008. But I mean, if you, if you, if you're on a long enough time scale, I, I, you, you don't have to worry about that too much, do you? Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If it's long enough, um, if it's long enough, yeah, you do term and then you invest in the market. But what happens, let's just say you do like a 30-year term policy. What happens when that 30-year term is done and for whatever reason you can't get any more life insurance, like 30 years later, you're uninsurable. Uh, then what What happens? Then you just have your portfolio. That's a good, because you've been building up the portfolio alongside the term policy. And all the money you saved by not getting yeah, that life insurance. Yeah. 30 years, you better have over a million bucks if you've been yeah. investing. I think you probably will. You might have a million dollars, but then how do we pass that on to the next generation in a estate planning manner or tax favored manner? Yeah, That's now I do it. agree that if someone is looking for simplicity and they don't want to, you know, they don't want to get involved, then complicated uh you know well the turnover estate to planning the, that's estate planning at 30 years old let's say you're 65 years old yeah. those are the people that buy the variable life policies yeah yeah those are the people that do it wealthy people in their 60s that's yeah. who that's yeah. who i mean that's what we used to go after people that yeah. were worth millions how about dick joe comics in their 50s <laughs> anybody would pay for it really <laughs> yeah man God be perfect him. perfect well you know i personally uh am happy with this it's you know ever since i have my daughters you yeah. know i wanted to make sure that i didn't leave them with nothing so i have term i have whole i'm betting on myself i you know but i just betting on yourself sure. gonna die soon hey man i partied pretty hard back in the day you know i can't believe i I don't have kids with flippers hey, at this. Hey point, Howie, but... could we get key? Could we get key man insurance on uh on Sam? I I feel like we could probably could right since we're we all partners. Get a on this. We could definitely yeah, get we a should, policy. We should do that. We should... Hold on, what you're gonna bet against me? Yeah, Brad? it's called it's called key man insurance. Yeah, you man. have somebody important to your. I'll own. give you key managed though <laughs> uh, to your face, dude. Not cool, man. But I I think it is important, and yeah. whether we can sit back, I, I mean, obviously, um. 
some people are I, I'm very happy that I made the investment. Then later on, I can flip it in to a, uh, I have a, a term that mm -hmm. they've told me I can eventually turn into a hole. Yeah. Uh, and I'm when I'm older after a certain amount of years and uh, I'm working out a lot, I take Croft Maga, so I'm probably gonna live for a while. Right. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I learned how to kill my hands. <laughs> And so nobody's going to come fuck with me. And the point <laughs> is I'm going to invest. I'm going to be around and I'm happy to do the investment in the long run. And yeah. that's my opinion. Do you want to invest your, so the question is if you're looking to get money and get into the market and start making some money to, you know, to change your family's, you know, trajectory mm -hmm. financially, is this the best move to make? The Using this strategy? Yeah, dividend pay. yeah I, would, I would definitely say so. You think about it, you don't have to worry about what the market does. You always have access to the funds. You always be able, you're always able to borrow against the funds. Um, it's, an, it's a powerful estate planning tool, right? Because it passes on to the next generation tax-free. They can then use that tax-free death benefit to then start their own system, their own bank on yourself system. So yeah, I think, yeah, this definitely changes. It changes. It's a big mindset shift, right? It's not just buying a product all over the counter. It's changing the way you look at money, changing the way you um, you kind of believe it. Every, I mean, everybody I talk to about the strategy who's not really familiar with it at some point, they have a lot of pushback. They're like, you know, why would I, why would I do whole life insurance? Why not just, you know, do this other strategy or whatever? And I and I get that completely. But I think when you take a deeper look into it, like the growth and how it grows, even when you leverage it, it's really powerful because you could use this. In for any investment you want, you could use this for the market. You could put 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 money in the stock market using this policy. You could put money in real estate, like I do. I'm a limited partner in real estate deals, so I use my policies. I borrow against them, and I use that as a limited partner in real estate deals. And then when I do it that way, I make money with real estate with the with those deals as well as inside the policy. And the policy keeps growing, so it kind of gives you like a snowball effect of growing your money in multiple places. And let's just say another 2008 happens, right? With real estate or stocks or whatever, like a, a major market crash, the life insurance companies are not affected by that. They're not affected by, you know, what happens in the market. It keeps growing. You still have access to the money. So it's like a volatility buffer. It gives you a chance to create a hedge against those risks and still be able to, you know, participate. And let's just say like another 2008 happens and like real estate cuts down in value, like 40, 50% off. Then you have these policies that have been compounding this time then you can go and borrow against those policies and buy real estate at a discount when well, nobody else could do that because everybody else who wants to buy real estate is going to have to go to a bank and banks aren't going to loan money when real estate values are half the, the cost, you know, half the value. Like in 2008, that's what happened. The only thing that confuses me about that, and I know we used to, I used to sell those policies, but the only thing that it just didn't make sense is you're essentially borrowing the money that you've put into the policy. So, if if I'm investing in the stock market and I'm allocated correctly with I don't know 35% bonds or, mm -hmm. or fixed income, 65% equities, and we have another 2008. If we even have that, my fixed income portion is is actually still going to be going yeah. up at three, four, five percent. So if I need money, I can just take it out of that. So that's the only thing you're actually borrowing with your own money. I mean, it's your own money that you put in. It's your own money plus the insurance company pays dividends and interest too on that. So it's I know, but it's it's yeah, yeah. it's not much. <laughs> yeah, you know, you're right. It's it's conservative. It's very it's not it's not a get rich quick way. But the point is, is that yeah, when you you fund this policy with your money, you borrow against it. Eventually, the loans are going to exceed the basis. They're going to go beyond the basis. Eventually, that'll happen. Well, you know what? The only thing I can say is that, you know, it's 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 better than a lot of things. Um, yeah. You know, it's better than uh, lighting your money on fire. That's for sure. Better than going to a strip <laughs> joint five nights in a row and then ending up in Vegas. That's that's another thing, too, is a lot of a lot of my clients like to use a strategy because it's like a forced savings strategy. Right. If they're doing like three hundred or five hundred yeah. a month. Yeah. You know, yeah. Three to five hundred dollars a month <clears throat> is not out outlandish yeah i mean that's not a bad investment to make three to five hundred i'm not saying it's not a lot of money i'm just saying it's not a ton well, of money the first thing you should be doing if you're in your 20s 30s or 40s yeah 
even 50s is three, four hundred dollars a month. You should be putting that into an IRA. I think, yeah, I think Howie, I think you should be putting it somewhere for sure. Like it has to be, it has to go somewhere. It's better than, you know, I think, because I think that as humans, when you have the money already allocated somewhere and it's already coming out of your account, you treat it like a bill, even though it's not a bill, you treat it like a bill yeah. where it's like, you know, you, you take, you take that out of your control. You take that out of your hands yeah. now. And, and that's a good thing. Yeah. It goes into a 401k or mm -hmm. with your teacher, cop, fireman, 403b. It's going somewhere accruing interest yeah. uh, tax deferred. And yeah. that's the most important thing. Yeah, I agree. Absolutely. And you know, and the benefit in your situation is, is the, basically in my opinion, the, the biggest advantageous uh, aspect of any kind of life insurance is the death benefit. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's it. That's the death benefit. I mean, you can, that goes on to your, whoever you want it to go on to um, tax free. Mm -hmm. Correct. So, you know, so, so you also want to get in some real estate discussion. We've been yeah. talking about this a lot. A lot of people think this is a bad time to get into real estate because interest rates are so high. Yeah. You know, I mean, real estate makes the most millionaires out yeah. there. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I think real estate right now is good to get into. Like buying a single family house to live in right now, for example, or a, a residential property you're going to live in is going to be difficult right now because interest rates nearly doubled in the last year. So that's a that's a problem right now. Real estate from that perspective has been slowing down. Like lenders have seen a decline in applications coming in. Like even, even people who work at mortgage companies are getting laid off because their, their business is starting to reduce now. But from the perspective of multifamily, uh, larger commercial real estate deals, I think those are on the rise. Those have been appreciating, increasing. Rents have been going up. Uh, it's becoming more competitive to invest in these deals. So that's those are the deals I'm investing into, and I think that they're more, um, they're less resistant to market changes, right? Like single family houses that people live in. Those are those feel it when when interest rates change, when there's a change in the economy. Those are the ones that feel it right away. But when you talk about yeah. Yeah, yeah. When, you talk, when you talk about like 200, 300 unit buildings uh, on the East Coast or on the West Coast, you know, these buildings, you know, people have to live there even in a in a lower economic time or like uh, um, a kind of a bull market. People still have to live in these places. They still have to rent. So that that kind of creates a higher return for the investors, knowing that, you know, they're they're investing into properties that people have to live in. So. I think that from the from that perspective, real estate is going up now, even with interest rates going up, rent is still going up. And then the fact that a lot of people can't buy now because interest rates went up, they might not qualify for loans now because they have to make more money or they have to put more money down to qualify for those loans. It leaves them to to rent. So it creates like a more of a demand in the in the in the rental space. It's tough right now because you know, stat came out today, home builder sentiment is down uh half. 50% from where it was six months ago, not billing anything right now. And I mean, the 30 year fix just hit 7%. That's, yeah, yeah. That's crazy. That's double from what it was more than double. Holy shit. Stan just hit one out. We're up three, nothing. <laughs> Baseball is dead to me. Right now. <laughs> Baseball is dead. He just hit one in right field, baby. We're up. Three oh nothing. my God. How great is that? You guys yeah. got a nice day off for no reason. It's gross. Yeah. More than I'm one bro, day. Off. Sorry, get ready, get ready sorry for do you have any thoughts on rigging of sports? Do you have any thoughts on that? Would Dude, you they're like going to crazy. <laughs> Major League Man, baseball, I'm the, I'm the worst person. So they could have a big market team in the uh, World Series. Any thoughts on that? I'm literally, sorry, I'm the worst person to talk about sports. I don't know anything about sports. Sounds no, like you're probably. a happy man. Yeah, yeah. really. Oh. You're better sorry. Off, man. Sorry, let me ask you something. Yeah. I've had a friend of mine approach me about getting a bunch of investors together yeah. and start buying property. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I like that a lot, right? Especially for the people who are just putting money in, they're limited partners, right? They don't have to go out and do the, they don't have to find the properties. They don't have to deal with the realtors, the banks, the contractors, the tenants, none of that. They're limited partners. So if you can get limited partners to invest with you and somebody is an active investor or the, they're the general partner, somebody who has a proven track record, right? They know how to buy real estate. They know how to negotiate. They know how to hire contractors, how to deal with tenants. The, you know, you invest in those people as a limited partner and then they do the work and then you own a percentage of that property, right? Like a portion of that deal or that property. This way you can focus on what you're doing throughout the day 
And yeah, I, I like that. And then plus when you pull your money to, together, you could buy bigger properties. Like when you look at these, you know, 200 unit high rise buildings, it's not like one person owns that. It's, you know, 20, 30 people get together, they pull their capital together and then they take that pooled capital and then they go to a bank and they borrow, you know, the other 75%, they pull together 20, 25% and they go borrow 70, 75% of that. Um, so that's how you're able to do bigger deals with more people kind of pulling to pulling their capital together. There are like, obviously like laws, right? Like securities laws. You want to talk to a securities attorney before you go out raising capital. But I like the whole idea that I'm a, I'm a big believer in pulling capital together and doing bigger deals. Real estate investment trust. Yeah. Yeah. You should start one, dude. And just dude, Simon, all four of us just run. Simon out. Property Group, man, pays like over a 7% yield. Plus it was up like 10% last week. It, Real estate investment trusts are way down right now, and they're a great buy. Great buy. Yeah. No, I love commercial real estate right now. I think it's uh, it's a great thing to get into. Yeah, so I want to get into um, asset protections with you because yeah. that's a big issue. Uh, you know, LLCs, yeah. all that stuff, people protecting their assets. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm a conspiracy theorist. We yeah. have Alex Jones. Or, they're all like... What can he be sued for? What does he have to give up? He lives in Texas. There's a cap, all that yeah. stuff. Talk to me about asset protection. Yeah, I think if I'm not mistaken, his lawsuit was like the biggest ever, like yeah, play, uh, uh, lawsuit ever. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but let's go. That's, yeah, yeah, that's a different. Yeah, where's he gonna get a billion? Yeah. Where do you come up with a billion? Yeah, I awesome. mean, you just might as well sue him for the moon at this point. <laughs> We're gonna sue you for Ju Jupiter <laughs> and Mars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, the point is right is that a lot of people who accumulate wealth, like they get, they get. It's not a surprise they get sued, right? Like you're a target because people want to take, figure out a way to take your money. So you have to figure out a way to protect that. And different states have different laws. I think like the best state to live in for asset protection is Florida, maybe because like your person. That, that's why like people have like fifty million dollar houses in Florida because their house, their personal residence, is protected. I don't think there's any limit at all. The only limit, the only rule is you have to live in the house for a certain amount of time as your personal residence. But other than that, and, and it's kind of like, because think about it, you're going to work really hard to accumulate all this wealth and business and investments, whatever you're doing, you want to figure out a way to protect it. Um, it depends on the state. It depends on also the vehicles you're using. Like we talked about like cash value, whole life insurance. I know you guys don't like it, but it's a powerful asset protection tool. You know, you can- I'm on your side, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> Um, you know, pensions, annuities, all these types of vehicles are, are protected. And then also you have your LLCs, your trust, things like that. Those, you know, talk to your attorney about those, but you need to protect those things because if you don't, um, like you will face like unfair trials and things like that. Like, for example, you get into a car accident and somebody wants to sue you for over a million dollars, even though the damages weren't even a fraction of that. So it's not about, you know, not giving people what, what 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 if it's your fault what what it's worth the claim or the damage but it's about people not taking advantage of you because you have money i think it's that perspective right yeah these these uh these these uh thoughts are thirsty bro they're trying to get all that cash you know and you gotta yeah. like protect your your investments and stuff like that so if you want to do that what do you what do you suggest where what would be the first step to do that yeah, first step, I would okay, I would first I would do the basics, right? I mean, talk to an attorney. I'm not an attorney myself, but talk to an attorney. Um ha have your company owned in some sort of other entity. Like like for example, you go out, you do a job for somebody right now, that, you know, you're a 1099 contractor. That's just a sole proprietor. There there's no entity there. It's just you as the business owner as a person, right? And that's risky. So when you want to you want to incorporate LLC, S corp, C corp, I think from a tax perspective, LLC and S corp are probably better. C corp is not really that tax favored, but it's protect. It's a separate entity that's protected. So S corp you, or LLC, that's the way to go. Yeah, yeah. Um, the point is separateness, right? A lot of I in, interviewed a lot of asset protection attorneys on my podcast, and they keep using that term, you know, separateness. You know, separate yeah, yeah. yourself from your business. Have your business separated. Like if you own a car wash and a furniture store, they should be completely separate. They shouldn't be owned by the same entity, right? Common sense stuff, right? They're different, so that way, if one of them gets sued, you can't connect the other one to it. Because the first thing when somebody gets sued, or what's what? What does the attorney do? Or the attorneys? They find out if it's even worth suing you. That's the first step. 
not if you are at fall or not. They want to find out if it's even worth it. If you have assets available, they do all these types of public searches. They search databases, real estate, all types of things to, to find out what you own to see if it's actually worth going after you or not. So when you have these obstacles in place for attorneys and opposing people, then it's going to be difficult. It's going to cost them more money to come after you. So it's going to deter them or defer or deter them from coming after you, um, helping you protect more of your money. I love it. I want a final question. Yeah. Uh, invest in your business or save cash? What do you prefer and why? Yeah, that's actually my favorite question. I love that question because- That's why I asked it. <laughs> they're they're both really important, right? Like, and I think it's hard to say like you should always do one over the other. Like, always reinvest your money or or always save cash. I I'm a big fan of like allocations. Like, for every dollar you get, allocate a certain percentage just to, just to savings, and then another percentage to reinvest back into your business, and then obviously you need other allocations like your taxes and your pay as the owner and your profit and things like that. Like, there's a concept profit first. I'm a big fan of it. It's how to proportional how to how to break down your income into like buckets like your income bucket profit taxes and so on so that gives you it takes away the thinking process away from it and it kind of creates a set set of rules for you and managing money instead of thinking like all right when i get this money then i'll pay my taxes and then when i get this other money i'll pay you know myself and like you're kind of all over the place so you're like kind of guessing and a lot of small business owners do this they just guess as they're making money like whatever needs to be paid kind of gets paid and it's problematic, obviously, because certain things need to be paid in, in, in order. So when you have like allocations in place already, um, it makes it easier. It takes away the thinking away from that. I like it. I like it a lot. So you said you had a podcast. What's the name of your podcast? Thinking Like a Bank. Thinking Like a Bank. Yeah. I like it a lot. Sorry. Thank you so much for coming on. Is there any yeah. final thoughts you want to leave with everybody? No, thanks, guys. I had a lot of fun talking to you guys. It was, it was a pleasure being here. I like it. I got term and I got whole and I'm a big, uh, I I'm very excited about having it. You know, Howie is uh, over 50 and he has teddy bears on his couch. So you got to take everything <laughs> with a uh, grain of salt, you know, so that's not, yeah. Yeah. He's got the, the rally bears over there, which by the way, he lives in a big gay neighborhood in New York. So that could have different meetings. Um, mm. We appreciate you. Sorry. Uh, be safe in Chicago. We know it's lawless out there. So enjoy that. And that's coming from people in New York and LA. Yeah. Um, we appreciate you. Uh, make sure to send uh, the email that you got from Johnny. Make sure to send any links you want to include okay. in the description so we could uh, make sure we let everybody find out all your awesome stuff. And please check out his podcast, Thinking Like a Bank. And uh, thanks for coming on, brother. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. It was a great time. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thanks. All right. All right. Good interview. Spicy. That's how I like it. In it to win it. I own whole term insurance. Uh, so let's get into it. Do we got any questions, Jay Nice? Did, did Sam just say he owns whole term insurance? I own whole and term. He just mixed them all into one yeah, bag. That's how I do it, dude. Because I'm a comic and I understand the importance of of uh, of trimming the fat off of jokes so that is just, trimming. words cost money howie okay whole, i got whole and term insurance there you go see i had to add an and to it to make it make so howie doesn't fucking get pissy guys oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> hey guys uh so any more stories man let's get in some more story i love story time with jay nice well i just want i ikea has announced that they're going to be hiking prices by up to 80 percent blaming surging transport and material costs which is so you I know mean, what i hear Jesus when i hear Christ. that i hear that uh kia is going to be closing down some stores <laughs> price growth on more than a dozen items has outstripped inflation by at least twofold since december last year according to a new study by retail week they include uh it's giving me a list of all the items that but they're blaming it on transport costs which is i i what, is, what does that mean exactly howie what do you think that means is that, whole, is that fuel? Is that the cost of fuel? That's the supply chain situation. I think that means transsexuals are really holding oh, up. Oh, really? The begin yeah. Here, here's the big question. I got you. Yeah. Either one of you Trans guys are buying enough IKEA. Yeah. That's Have you guys ever owned anything from IKEA? Have you ever owned anything from IKEA? Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. In LA, I, I mean loves it's, IKEA. It's very popular Has there in LA. Ever been anything they make the biggest piece of shit that's ever been put together? <laughs> well honestly it's 
it might be everything all the furniture in our studio is from ikea i think so. yeah <laughs> fucking howie hey johnny have you ever seen the uh where this this group of actors in la went and shot a whole like digital series in ikea and no. one of the guys in it went on to be like a big actor he's he was in like the lead off uh off fresh off the boat Will you see wait that? wait so they treat it like a set like it's like a set yeah they like shot a all through ikea that's so funny no i haven't seen that that's that, that. it's like you a web series up? yeah i'm looking yeah, it was a web series shot in ikea it's called I'm ikea hot. ikea heights it's called yeah how did it. they get good sound in an ikea though that's just hard for me to imagine you get good sound anywhere i had the nightmare again the one where oh it's hard to the it, it's it's really low quality uh because it's not i guess it was done for like a streaming service or something sam yeah. and it's been ripped to youtube and poor quality i can show you if it, if you want to look at it but, yeah but we, oh, we just want to watch the this Asian tv show has for gone on to do some big roles yeah it's this guy if you can recognize him in the shitty yeah yeah quality. yeah you want to just watch this for the rest of the episode or what yeah, yeah let's just bill, watch this for the rest that's bill wang yeah Who's that? His name's Bill Wang? Did you no, say his name's not Bill Wang. It's not? Randall Park is the guy's name. Randall Park. By the way, you know what I just found out? Ali Wong's real name isn't Ali Wong. Why would you change your name to Ali more Wong? more Asian. To make it? Oh, it's less Asian, her, her, re, her real oh, name? Oh, yeah, her real name's like Sarah like, Clark or something. Like, oh, no <laughs> shit. Sarah Clark. I don't even know what the real name is, but it's super white. And now she changed it to the most Asian name that you possibly can, Ali Wong. I can't find any information Listen, about that. Here's what I know. Oh, no, her. here, okay, it's Alexandra Dawn Wong is her name. So her last name is Wong, but her first oh, name really? is Alexandra. Oh, really? Someone told me that the ah! I owe Allie Wong an apology. Allie, I'm apologizing for that. Someone said your name was totally different, and I will fight them. So I I bought, right after I got divorced, I bought an Ikea bed. I knew nothing yeah. about it, nothing at all. I didn't ever heard of it. I just bought an Ikea bed, and I put it together. And while I was putting it together, I'm like, this makes no sense. Why the fuck am I putting this this peg here? This is the worst piece of shit. So I put the whole thing together. Two days later, I hook up with this chick. She might have been 180, 200, maybe 210. Yeah. I'm not, but within the first 30 seconds of having sex on that bed, when I say that bed splintered, I'm talking it just internally combusted, like everything shattered. The whole bed, sh I had to throw it out the next day. How he, I would it now? Either you're bad at building things, or you were doing some power fucking. No, it was a piece of shit. It was okay. a piece of shit. Oh, so you gave him a chance to spread the legend of Howie, and he didn't yeah, take. He it. didn't take it. Yeah, you no, I wasn't doing a power, power hump and a wildebeest. She, 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 you know, it might have been more like wrestling. She was a big, good guy's <laughs> chick. By the way, can we all admit it's a golden era of female of uh, fat models right now? There's never been a, a greater time in fat modeling than right now is well yeah of course i mean because there was no such thing as a fat model before 10 years there's ago there's always been chunky models dude, not fat never, models that's not a new, like that's mainstream new bro fat models yeah, that's new bro they're just big bone yeah i mean there was a magazine called you know what was it bbw or whatever that you could be a fat model of a certain type but jobs yeah yeah, there's, you know, it's like my grandpa used to always say, "Fat chicks, tighter vagina." Any other stories? Yeah, you told me that one time. Not sure that's true, but it's true, Johnny. I don't buy that. It's true. Ezra Miller could face twenty six years in prison. Right? Oh yeah, dude, that guy. What a crazy that person! That guy, Just completely crazy. Did, weren't you? Didn't you want to tell us about Ibon, Sally? Yeah, that's the big thing. Listen, if you're listening and you want a guaranteed investment that is 100 safe you're buying an i bond right from the treasury an i bond you can buy up to ten thousand dollars worth you can buy a hundred dollars or ten thousand dollars worth that's the max but you're going to get 9.62 percent uh interest over the next six months you have to buy them by october 28th that's the last day where you get 9.62 percent you can go right online to? 
just punch in I bonds and you can buy them right online. It's an unbelievable guaranteed investment, 9.62%. You can't beat that. What are, what's it going to after that? I mean, you know, um, after the six month period, it, they, it just reconfigurates, you know, it may do another 9.62%, could be 6%, 7%. Not but, likely to be more, though, is what you're saying. I doubt it. I doubt okay. it. But still, 9.62% right. from the government, that's the best thing I've ever heard. And what are the factors that have made it so that you can get such a great return on those bonds? I mean, just the treasuries, the interest rates have gone up. Um, and, you know, it, they they max it out. You can't buy, you know, a million dollars worth. You can only buy ten thousand dollars worth but i think why would they do that why do they max out when they want as as many of those sold as possible if the goal is to sell them i don't think they want a ton of them sold at 9.62 percent what's their goal what's their goal with with selling i bonds i don't know i mean it's uh it's i think they want to get rid of they're the biggest the government's the biggest holder of treasuries in the world so i think it's just they can get some of them off their books okay okay that's interesting because it, it's all. I, it, I just see if they want to get them off their books, you think they would want to get them as quickly as possible by, you know, selling them to yeah, nine people who can buy a shit ton of them. That's, that's uh, interesting. That's, that's interesting. A hell of a, hell of a, uh, man, fucking Hicks just got hurt. He's out of the game. He got hurt. I haven't seen anyone get hurt in a baseball game in four years. You just <laughs> what had a are you talking about. <laughs> of course you have. We are all the time. Baseball? Yeah, dude. Come on. It's it's hard to get hurt in baseball. Half the Braves team was uh, pitchers get Tommy John three times a year. All right. like I'm not talking about pitching. Let's just you're playing short or third or outfield. What you about rarely... guys getting hit in the face by balls? That happens all the time. This dude got hurt running. He ran into someone. Pull a hamstring. That happens a lot too. No, it doesn't. Sure, it does. What are you ever <laughs> so crazy. Doesn't it's not like the NBA or, or the NFL? Yeah, it's Speaking NBA, of that, NBA yeah. starts tonight, man. NBA starts tonight. I'm excited. Golden State in LA. Fucking excited. What are you doing, Sam? Sam's jerking off. Yeah, he looks like he's looking down at his dick. Yeah, can't What's hear he, him. Oh, he's muted he's himself. He's yeah. just waiting for. Waiting for uh, how he stopped talking baseball. Uh, <laughs> I'm not bitter my team's out at all. Not bitter at all. <laughs> Historic number of wins for your team. Yep, 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 yep. Couldn't beat Analytics the Padres. Suck my nuts. Suck my six-inch hammer. Sorry. Dude, we got the bases. Oh, God. Nestor. Oh, hold on. Cleveland has got the bases loaded. Yeah, but they're down yeah. four to zero. What inning? Second, third, fourth. Oh, third. is that only second? Damn. Yeah, dude. Yeah, this is early. Howie, I'm rooting for you. Third Are eight. you real? You're not rooting for the Yankees. I'm just rooting for Howie. By the way, I saw that uh, Peloton had to extend the return period for those treadmills another year. Isn't that hilarious? Saw that. That's, that yep. was still what a. I mean, just what a. You, it's hard to overstate how colossally disastrous that thing was for that company. It was such a, I mean, they blew so much money on that whole process of selling those things. And it was great during the pandemic, man. Great during the pandemic. They were crushing it. A lot of things were crushing it during the pandemic. Any other, any other stories, Johnny? Uh, No, that's about it for us. We're hit, we're hitting up against uh, what we are target time here, Sam. So if you want to take us. uh, I love it, bro. I love it. I love it. We can do the show is fire. We got we got great guests. We got teddy bears. Howie's hair is on point. Looking good, brother. Looking good. Johnny's still in space. What more do you want, guys? Great show. Uh, go to samtriple.com and see all of my dates. I got some great dates coming up tonight. We have Comedy Chaos. There's some tickets left for the second show. Come, get weird. Join us. Join us. Join us. And, uh, yeah, anything else? No, that's it. New new Broken Sims out. Check it out. Just dropped this morning. Howie, got any dates coming out? Got anything? Uh, we're working on at finishing the editing right now. How do you like it so far? Uh, I think it's going to be good. 
I think it was much better than I thought it was. Because I it was tough, you know. I'm trying to say things, and I got fucking Sam over here, like hey, hey, he's just <laughs> good at taping. Hey, hey, that's how old. <laughs> that's so bad. Hey, <laughs> yeah, Sam. right hey, during Sam. the show. <laughs> hey Sam, how do you feel about the Clippers this year? A few. <laughs> <laughs>